All right, so the point of today's video is that compound interest is a geometric series. First of all, what is compound interest? Well, hopefully, I will just use an example and define what I mean by compound interest along the way. So, let's just grab a different color pen. And let's say, first of all, that my principal is $100. So I invest $100 just like I did last time. My interest that I accrue, well, you know what? We don't have a sense of time yet. Why don't we have time? So time in years, um, of course, this is year zero. And so the amount of money in interest is going to be zero dollars because no time has passed which in our last video was called a of t is still going to be a hundred dollars meaning nothing has happened yet because no time has passed so i'm going to build this table and show you what i mean by compound interest it's very different from simple interest um okay well let's move to year one so the principal we're still treating as a hundred dollars. Mind you, I think the principal by definition is really just the initial interest, or the not the initial interest, the initial investment. Meaning that we're we're treating this as we're just making this one-time deposit in, in our investment or, or in the bank of one hundred dollars, maybe in a savings account, maybe in a mutual fund. We we'll make a one-time investment of $100 and then just watch our savings grow given that the interest rate is constant. And we're going to take the interest rate as 5% just like we did last time. So the interest rate is 5%, but remember this is interest expressed in dollars. Okay. So at the start of year one, that investment has been there for one year. And so at 5% interest, 5% of 100 is five dollars okay and so the amount in the bank now that interest gets added to the principal and so the bank balance now will read a hundred and five dollars right this is in dollars okay and of course these are in dollars as well everything is in dollars except for time obviously let's go to year two so for year two Remember the principle by definition, we, we're not adding more money to it. We're not investing more money. But something interesting happens here. The 5% interest is not no longer on the principle. The 5% interest is on the last amount. It was on $105. So now I have to calculate 5% of 105, which will be interesting. So... 105 times 0 0.05 gives me $5.25. Okay, so if I add $5.25 to my last balance, I get $110. Notice the addition doesn't go this way anymore. It's being added to the last amount. Well, just kind of like what happened last time. $110.25. Of course, Whenever you do bank balances or whenever you do any anything involving money, obviously you do not round to the nearest dollar because that's not what your bank would do. Your bank would round to the nearest cent. So that's what you should do when you do anything for me in terms of an assessment. Okay, so remember to round, remember to report all money all along your ledger sheet and everything that you do all the money has to be in dollars and cents. So round to the nearest cent, because that's going to be important in this exercise. So let's go to year three. This is where it gets interesting, because we're going to go beyond two decimal places. So now I add my 5.25 to 105, and I get 110.25. But now I need to do 5% of this number, 5% of $110.25. So I go times 0.05, and I get 5.5125. Why don't I just say $5.51? 
okay? Because that's what it rounds to. And so I add that, I add that number to 110.25, and I get $115.76. There's 76 and a quarter of a cent, but we just go to 76 cents. So $115.76. So that's our amount, and we're just going to treat that as the amount we have. So let's go to year four, which is as many years as we went to last time. $100 is still in there. That, the principal never changes. We never added any money to our investment. Uh, the only thing that's happening is that the amount is changing because it's gathering interest. So now we take 5% of the last amount. Now I said to take a 5% of 11576. Now this will be a much more accurate number. So if it's left over on your calculator, just do a straight multiplication times 0 0.05 and you'll get $5.79 because the 8 rounds this 8 to a 9. So $5.79 and then we add that to our last amount. We add that to 115.76, and we get $121.55. So already we see that compared with simple interest, simple interest gave us exactly $120 when we did the example. Now by year four with compound interest, we got an extra dollar and fifty-five. Um, and of course, this amount will become greater, this difference will become greater and greater and greater as time goes on. As time goes on, compound interest will take off and dwarf anything from um, anything compared with uh, simple interest. It kind of looks small now, but you know, if you think about simple interest, this would have been 120, so year five would have been 125. So if we do this again, multiply by 0 0.05 and we get six dollars and seventy oh six dollars and eight cents so we got now an extra dollar of interest right not five dollars anymore we're all the way to six dollars and eight cents now and we add that to our to our last balance and we get a hundred and twenty seven dollars and sixty three cents Compared to $125, you can see the difference between, this was 120 under arithmetic, um, under the, well, not arithmetic series so much as uh, simple interest, and this would have been $125, and you can see the difference is just over a dollar here, but it's now $2.63, so the difference itself is growing. These are getting further, these two amounts are getting further and further apart. And of course, this was $115 working backwards. And here we have less than a dollar difference. And here we have even, even less than that. So we have now uh, 110, and this would have been 105 under, under simple interest. No difference here, a difference of 25 cents here, a difference of 76 cents here but now more than a dollar and here it's becoming more than two dollars so the difference itself will grow exponentially so what does this amount to here I take a, a hundred I multiply by 1.05 and I get a hundred and five I multiply by 1.05 and I get a hundred and ten point two five I multiply by 1.05 and I get 115.76. Each time I want to get the next term, I always multiply by a constant amount, 1.05. So that it turns out then that um, basically, if I want to get to any one term directly, like if I want to get to the fifth year, I multiply, I take my 100 up here at top, multiply by 1.05 times 1.05 times 1.05 times 1.05 times 1.05 meaning I multiply by 1.05 to the power 5 well that turns out to be the same as the number of years so basically my a of t then is a geometric series so it's my principal amount my $100 because I'm only going by my first number times r to the power of n.
So, actually, it's not it's not really R because I didn't multiply. This is not 0.05, right? R was 0.05, but I was multiplying by 1.05. My common ratio is 1.05. So that means I have to multiply by 1 plus my interest rate to the power n. And this is the formula for compound interest. And 1 plus r is the common ratio. And, um, oh, sorry, it's not n. It's t. The time is in the exponent, folks. So for five years, we had to multiply by 1.05 to the power 5 to get $127.63. So that would bear out in this equation. So the formula for compound interest really treats 1 plus r as the common ratio and t as your, your time in years as basically your term number your term number counting from zero, right? So if zero is your first term, then this is your sixth term, but it's five, and you would have had to subtract one from here anyway if this was a geometric series. So starting from zero, you go to five, and so you can put in the years directly if you're counting from zero. Okay, and then you don't need to remember to subtract one. So that really, that really validates the idea that compound interest is indeed a geometric series.